Well, hello, and I think we've got a nice, easy topic for you tonight. Uh, something hopefully you're pretty comfortable with. We've been kind of sneaking them in all year. Little reviews from Algebra 1. And today we're just going to focus on simplifying rational functions. So definitely two ideas we want to keep straight. The numerator and denominator must be factored first. So let's start that in our notebook. There's rule one. And rule two, only factors cancel. Okay, only if they're factors. Exercise one. Recall that to multiply fractions, one simply multiplies their numerators and denominators. So A, simplify the numerical fraction 18 over 12, 18 over 12, by first expressing it as a product of two fractions. So all I'm saying is really 18 over 12 is really equal to some fraction times another fraction. And here's the only hiccup. One of the fractions has to be equal to one. All right, so basically, any number divided by itself is equal to 1. So I could say 6 over 6, and that takes care of the part that says one fraction has to be equal to 1. And now they told us, well, really, to get this 18, it's really just some fraction times another fraction. Well, 6 times what number is equal to 18? I would say 6 times 3. And 6 times what number is equal to 12? 6 times 2. And here's the part I can cancel. 6 over 6 is 1, so 18 over 2 is really equal to 3 over 2. I'm sorry, 18 over 12 reduces to 3 over 2. Let's try another example, b. Simplify the algebraic fraction. So I've got x squared minus 9 all over 2x plus 6. Okay, by first expressing it as the product of two fractions. Factor is the hint, one of which is equal to 1. So let's start by factoring. On the top, remember when there's two terms, I look for a GCF, clearly don't see one, so that must be perfect squares. So I've got x plus 3, and I've got an x minus 3. Okay. On the bottom, I could pull out the number 2, and I'm left with x plus 3. Now I'm just going to do it in the opposite order. I'm going to say that's really a 2 times an x plus 3. So what they're saying is really, I have two fractions times each other, and one of them is equivalent to 1. x plus 3 over x plus 3 cancels, and that gets you a 1 because it's the same term. So this reduces to x minus 3 over 2. Exercise 2. Now hopefully this looks familiar to you. We just kind of talked about exponents last week. So we've got three nice quick examples. So simplify each of the following monomials by dividing other monomials. Now I just want to recall why they're monomials. Basically we have one big term divided by one big term. We have no plus or minus signs. So let's talk about how we can simplify. Well I would say the 3 and the 6, 3 goes into 3 once and goes into 6 twice. Okay. Now let's talk about the, uh, the x values. When I divide, I subtract exponents. So I write them out. And I think you're kind of crazy if you don't. Don't try to do it in your head. Just write them down. I've got 5 minus 8. So that gets me x to the negative 3. And then I have 6 minus 3, which gets me y to the third. Now in my last step, I say, okay, if you're negative, you go downstairs. So I'm going to say this is 1 over 2. I'm going to move the x cubed downstairs. And I'm going to leave the y cubed upstairs, so to speak. The negative terms will just move to the bottom. Let's try b. All right. So the number-wise, I would say they're both divisible by 4. 20, uh, 4 goes into 25 times and into 4 once. So I've got a nice 5 on top. Um, again, do the math off to your side. I've got 10 minus 2, which is a positive 8. And I just have y to the 8th. Does anybody go downstairs? Does anybody have a negative exponent? I would say no. So I'm going to get rid of this fraction bar and just say basically that is my final answer. Lastly, why don't you pause it and try this one on your own. See if you get what I get. All right, well, hopefully you're back. I'm going to say 7 goes into 7 once and into 21 three times. So that's a one-third. And again, I'm going to do my math off to the side. I have 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. And then I have 1 minus 8, and 1 minus 8 is a negative 7. Now remember, just play the game. If you have a negative exponent, we're going to shoot you downstairs. So I've got a 1 third. I'm going to move the x squared down and the y to the 7th down. And there you have it. Hopefully that answer matched yours. Example 3. All right, so again, pause it. You've got this one on your own, a real nice, friendly example. See what you get. 
Don't cheat yourself. Pause it. Well, like I said, hopefully you're back in business here and you've got uh, the same work I do. I rewrote mine. I divided each of these by 5. That's where my 2 and 3 came from. Off to the side, I just subtracted exponents. 6 minus 2, I got 4. 3 minus 6, I got a negative 3. So when I go get my final answer, again, I'm just going to say, if you're negative, I'm going to boot you to the bottom. x to the 4th stays on top y cubed to the bottom. And if I look at my choices, let's see, I need a 2 thirds, which kills that one and that one. I need an x to the fourth on top and y cubed. Hopefully you've gone with choice three. A special type of simplifying occurs whenever expressions are in the form of x minus y and y minus x are involved. So exercise five, simplify each of the following fractions. All right, well, on top, I have nine minus six, which is three. And on the bottom, six minus nine, which is negative 3. Therefore, those cancel, but they leave me with a negative 1. Okay? They don't just disappear into thin air. Any number divided by itself is 1, and I'm left with this negative in front. Notice the 9 was positive, then negative. The 6 was negative, then positive. They switch signs completely. Fifth, or part B. 15 minus 3 is 12, and 3 minus 15 is negative 12. Again, the 12 divided by 12 cancel and make a 1, and I'm left with a negative 1. Again, they switch signs. 15 is positive, then negative. 3 is negative, then positive. C. Now, I don't have numbers to deal with, so I just have to pay close attention. I have A minus B all over B minus A. Do they follow the rule? Well, A was positive, then negative. B was negative, then positive. They both switched, therefore they will cancel to a negative 1. If you really have a hard time seeing it, just let a equal 0, okay? If I pretend a is 0, on top I would be left with 0 minus b would be negative b. On the bottom I'd be left with b minus 0, which is b, and you can see that they cancel. There's your 1, and there's a negative in front. So they do cancel, but to a negative 1. Exercise 6. Which of the following is equivalent to this? All right, so I'm going to take my 2 factor out that 2 and I'm left with x minus 5. On the bottom, ask yourself what type of factoring. I don't have a GCF, that means it must be perfect squares. So I've got 5 minus x and 5 plus x. And then you'll notice these look similar, not the exact same. Let's see if the rule works. Positive to negative, negative to positive, they switch signs. And again, if you still can't buy it, just let x equal 0. 0 minus 5 is a negative 5. 5 minus 0 is a positive 5, therefore they cancel to a negative 1. Now again, that negative is going to go on top, and I'm going to multiply to get negative 2 over 5 plus x. Exercise 7. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Alright, so again, it's all back to factoring. On top, I have some nice multiplying and adding to do. x and x, let's see. 9, I'm going to go with 3 and 3, and to get a positive 9, they either both have to be positive or both negative, and I'm going to go with negative, negative. On the bottom, hopefully you notice a GCF of 6, and I get 3 minus x. Okay, so now I'm going to look, 3 minus x and x minus 3, pretty darn close, but different by a negative. So I'm going to put that negative 1 on top. Now remember, you're multiplying, so I have to distribute that through. So I get negative x plus 3 all over 6. And if I look at my choices, I'm looking for a negative x plus 3. Now they might be in different order, that's okay. Just keep in mind you want to see a negative x and a positive 3. Uh, so that one's out, that one's out. I think this is my winner. Notice again they just switched order, that doesn't matter. Um, and that matches. Example 8, we've got finally a real exciting one for you to play with here. Now here's as ugly as they typically get. Notice how many terms are on top. Well, I count one, two, three, four. So the first thing I do is I look for that GCF. Do you see a GCF? Do all of them have an X? No. Nope. Are they all divisible by something? No. Nope. So what type of factoring must it be if I have four terms on top? Let's make a note there. We've got a nice factor by grouping. Now, to me, that takes a lot of work, so I kind of do all that grouping off to the side before I dare try to split it up. So let's off to the side kind of revisit factor by grouping. All right, 
So off to the side there, remember we're going to take our first two in a bracket and we're going to pull out a GCF of both two. So what are you thinking for GCF? All right, notice I don't see a number, but I do think I can pull out an x squared. And then I would say I'm left with 2x minus 7. Now, how do you know if you did that right? Well, remember, take that x squared, distribute it through, do you get what you started with? All right, now remember, your goal is to have the same thing here as you do here. So if I look at this, let's see, it looks like they're both divisible by 5. Now, do you want a positive 5 or a negative 5? And just use some common sense there. I think I want to pull out a negative 5. And let's check and see if we're right. Negative 10x divided by negative 5 is a positive 2x. And positive 35 divided by negative 5 is a negative 7. Did you get the same thing in there? If you did, you know you did it right. All right, now we do the big GCF of the binomial. So again, I just want to make a note. We are doing a binomial GCF. And I'm pulling out the, the binomial, the two terms they have in common. So I'm going to pull out the 2x minus 7. And in a nice big bracket, I'm going to write what's left from each. If I take that out completely, on this side I get an x squared from my first bracket. And if I take that out completely, I get the number minus 5. And that, my friends, is actually what I'm going to put on the top of my factor. It's 2x minus 7 and the x squared minus 5. Okay, so again, I just want you to take note, this required a lot of side work before I could just go ahead and factor that bad boy. All right, now let's factor the bottom. I've got three terms. Do I have a GCF? Well, son of a gun, I don't. So I just got to slow down and do, okay, I got a nice multiply, add, multiply. Let's start at the beginning. To get a 2x squared, my only options are 2x by x. Now let's think, for 14, I could use 1 and 14 or 2 and 7. Not a ton to choose from, but I definitely have to, you know, guess at it and check. The other thing I want to take note is if I have to multiply to a positive, let's make a note that the signs, I have to be the same, same sign. And if I'm adding to a negative, that's telling me that they're both negative. All right, so what do you want to try? 14 and, I'm sorry, 14 and 1 or 7 and 2? Well, I'm going to go with Hmm, let me think here. I'm going to go with a 7 here and a 2 here, and let's double check and see if that worked. On the inside, I get negative 7x. On the outside, I get a negative 4x. And 7 and 4 do make 11, so I know that checks. Now, let me told you, tell you how I kind of cheated a little bit. I said I want one of these to cancel. So if I saw a 2x here, my first guess was to try to make that a 7, because my hope is that they cancel. And it works, so I can cancel the 2x minus 7 and the 2x minus 7. And I would say I get an answer of x squared minus 5 all over x minus 2. Now let's add one more question in there to our final question here. What makes this fraction undefined? What makes this fraction undefined? Now remember, there's only one number you can't divide by. You can take any number in the world, but you're not allowed to divide by 0. Okay, and the calculator will give you an error. You are not allowed to divide by zero. So remember, I'm just going to take whatever's on the bottom there and set it equal to zero. And basically, I'm going to say, or not equal to zero if that makes sense, x cannot equal two. That is the only number in the world I cannot plug in there. So this function is defined when x e undefined when x equals two. Well, believe it or not, I think that does it for us tonight. We're going to get a lot of great factoring practice in tomorrow. And if you have any questions, stop in before school.